Hello everyone, what is happening? I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. In anticipation of the upcoming release of the new Lion King remake, which by the way I cannot wait for, I love the Jungle Book, I'm about to watch Mowgli and I'm still eagerly awaiting Aladdin, so let's just say this year definitely satisfied my childhood Disney dreams. But there is a twist. What if our beloved Lion King was not exactly how it seemed? What if Scar was actually the good guy? What if Timon and Pumbaa were actually this close to becoming Lion Dinner? Before we get into the video, I know I don't need to remind you guys, but do like and subscribe to the channel and check out Top 10 Hindi videos if you haven't already. It's quite a good time over there. Self plug, I know. But anyway, enough of my rambling, let's just get into it. This is the Top 10 Scary Lion King Theories. At number 10 is cannibalism. This was the craziest theory I came across on researching but anything is possible in the world of Disney. A fan thread on reddit started by canned frogs claimed that Scar was actually a cannibal. During the scene in the cave where Scar is picking his teeth and Zazu is in a cage singing his coconut song, you see Scar playing with a skull. Okay, yes, that doesn't raise any red flags yet, but just wait. Apparently, after some research, the Reddit user found out that it was actually a lion skull he was holding. And we see him throughout the movie being way skinnier than all the other lions, and during the drought, complaining about not having enough food. And this was after Mufasa's death, so canned frogs and many others think that Scar may have actually eaten Mufasa. Pretty crazy, right? Killing your brother is one thing, but then eating him too? Come on, Scar, you're better than that. Coming in at number nine, we have Mufasa the villain. People say we always see a story through the eyes of the victor, so in the Lion King's case, we see Mufasa and Simba as the good guys, because they lived on to tell the tale, and all their supporters, like Zazu, retold the same story to us of the hero that was Mufasa and the villain that was Scar. But there's a theory that Mufasa was actually the bad guy all along. Every character has a normal name in the movie, like Nala, Sarah, Rabi, Simba, etc., except Scar. The theory goes that Mufasa gave Scar the scar he has on his face when they were kids and then continued to torment him and call him Scar for the rest of his life, bullying him into the shadows until one day he just couldn't take it anymore. And well, you know how the story goes from there. At number 8, we have the drought. Right after Scar snakily kills Mufasa, Simba leaves Pride Rock, leaving Scar in charge, and a drought envelops the area. Many fans theorize it was actually Simba's fault that there was a drought to begin with and not Scar's because in this story it's the characters who control the weather and not the earth's air pressure and temperature apparently. Fans claim that all the past kings are in the sky like when we see Mufasa's cloud spirit giving Simba the whole remember who you are speech. Simba spends ages with Timon and Pumbaa in a tropical jungle where it rains quite a bit and when he returns to Pride Rock we see all the clouds rolling in behind him and it rains shortly after. For years Years, I just associated the bad weather conditions with Scar and his villainy, but it was apparently because of our hero Simba this whole time. Who knew? At number 7, we have the case of Zazu. Not gonna lie, but I loved Zazu in the film. He was so annoying yet endearing that I just liked all of his scenes. But one fan theory suggests he was actually a traitor to Mufasa and it was on Scar's side all along. Zazu is basically pushed around by literally everyone, including Simba when he was just a cub, and no one really listens to him ever except Mufasa. But the theory suggests he grew tired of the menial tasks Mufasa kept making him do, which is why he ended up teaming up with Scar. I mean, he was the only one that was with Simba and Nala when they were going to the watering hole, and even after they got rid of him and went to the elephant graveyard, he still somehow found them and showed up later on. Now how would he know to go to the elephant graveyard unless someone told him where they were going? And the only people that knew they were going there? Say it with me people. Scar and his hyenas. Need I say more? Coming in at number 6 are the hyenas. According to this theory, the hyenas in the film are actually the good guys. A bit far fetched, I know, but let me explain. At the beginning, Scar was the only lion helping the hyenas and he told them that the other lions were the enemy. Naturally, the hyenas believed him and thought they were fighting for the good side. Then towards the end, when Scar starts mistreating the hyenas and tells Simba he was never loyal to them, the hyenas finally realize that he's the bad guy after all. Simba throws Scar off the boulder, but it's not like he immediately dies after 
after that. If it wasn't for the hyenas killing him and ridding Pride Rock of this menace, Scar would have simply laid low and planned his next attack and the kingdom would have still not been at peace. So if anything, we owe the hyenas a huge thank you. At number 5 is the Timon and Pumba packed lunch. As his dad, Mufasa basically has to teach cute young Simba what animals are okay to eat at Pride Rock and which ones aren't. Which is already weird because he's meant to be the king of all these creatures and he sat there telling Simba which ones are okay to snack on and which ones aren't, but let's just sweep that under the rug. Even the scene with the antelope, Simba actually asks Mufasa, but don't we eat the antelopes? And Mufasa says yes. So to a certain degree, Mufasa had already told him what he could and couldn't eat before he died. And keep in mind that there are no warthogs in the movie aside from Pumba, so obviously Simba never encountered one when Mufasa was still alive. So really the only reason Simba never ate Timon or Pumba was not because he was nice, it's because he didn't know he could. Coming at number 4 we have Nala. Now who doesn't love Nala? She's Simba's best friend, wife, the mother of his children, his partner in crime, a kick ass woman, you name it, Nala is that. The embodiment of the perfect 21st century woman slash lioness. Well the theory is that Scar is actually Nala's dad and Nala and Simba are in fact first cousins and hence incest. Not very PG. According to the theory, Scar wanted to be with Sarabi, but she was already promised to Mufasa. So, in true lion fashion, he had a cub with Serafina in the meantime, but never told Nala. Where is the evidence, you ask? Simba is Mufasa's son because they both had the same brown eyes, and he's literally his dad's carbon copy. And Nala is the only cub with green eyes, and who else has green eyes? Yep, you just answered your own question. Scar. At number 3 is Scar as the true hero. Silence, silence, just hear out the theory before you hate me. Now, what's really going on with the government at Pride Rock? It's an oligarchy, a small group of people, aka the lions, who control the whole area and everyone in it. The whole circle of life thing is just a way to continue oppressing the animals that aren't lions, and Scar is the only poor guy who actually sees this and wants to end it. So he tries to break the circle of oppression, not to be mistaken with the circle of life, by staging a coup to overthrow Mufasa and he does it with the help of the hyenas, who have also been super oppressed for no reason other than being a bit ugly and super annoying. Annoying. So really, in this theory, Scar just overthrew a glorified dictator. Coming in at number 2 is that Timon is actually a cult leader. Small but fierce people, small but fierce. The theory goes that Timon, who is clearly smarter and more charismatic than Pumba, is the head of a cult, and unknowingly gets Simba on his side because he knows he's going to grow up to be a powerful lion, and when you're that small, living in a habitat where anything can kill you, a lion is a pretty good friend to have. When he sees Simba all hurt and vulnerable, he feeds him with his philosophy of Hakuna Matata, of a life of chilling and no worries and impressionable young Simba happily joins him. And for all we know he did it to Pumba as well cause let's face it, he's not the smartest tool in the shed. From what the theory said, Timon's goal is recruiting bigger animals by targeting them when they're quite young and vulnerable, bit creepy but then promising them a carefree life. This one was actually my favourite one, let me know what you guys think of it, true or not true. At number 1 we have not really brothers. According to this theory, Scar and Mufasa weren't brothers at all but just rivals in the same herd. Now I have to go but David Attenborough planet earth on you guys right now, in the wild, in their natural habitat when that no. <laughs> When the head of the herd gets old, another rogue male lion who isn't part of that herd usually comes and kills him and all his babies and then becomes the head of that pride. Prides usually only ever have one male lion so because there were two in the Lion King, it was only a matter of time before one of them killed the other. And of course it had to be the one who was always in the shadows who rises above the other. Scar even says at one point that I'm from the shallow end of the gene pool. So he was literally telling us all along that they weren't brothers and we would just sat there with our popcorn like oh family rivalry <laughs> and that wraps up this video guys i had actually never heard of any of these before this video except the one about nala so my mind was actually blown when i thought about it and realized 
okay, The Lion King may not have exactly been what I thought it was when I watched it all those years ago. Let me know in the comments below which theories you think could be true or are true and which one surprised you the most. My favourite one was probably Timon being a cult leader because it's so far fetched yet could be so true at the same time. But anyway that's all from me guys, I've been your host Eamon Hassan and I'll see you next time. Bye!